Yeah, I changed up my. Oh, there we go. The meeting is recorded. Got it. Yeah, I changed up my right. room too. Different view. Awesome. Well, welcome back to the Gym Owners Podcast, everyone. If you're watching this, we got Chris from Rosemont Health and Fitness back on the podcast, notoriously for us going off the rails, uh, our topics that we want to discuss. We're going to try to discuss um, increase, knowing when to increase your dues and what methods there are. And Chris is going to go over what method he chose and, and why. We also want to discuss how January is affecting the gym industry this year, what we've noticed. And Keep in mind, every gym is different. We understand there's gyms all over the country. Your gym may be different. We're taking what Chris is experiencing today. Um, so, Chris, what's up? Thank you for coming back. Always fun. We're always BSing on the phone. So thank you for coming back on, on the podcast. No, thanks for having me. I love being here. I love doing this with you. It's a great way to uh, enhance our businesses on all ends. Um, and I want to thank all the other gym members who have been doing it the last few months. I've been watching the videos. Um, I'm always giving them thumbs up on YouTube. Uh, I think it's a great way for all of us to connect. We all have our same issues. We all have different issues. It's kind of nice to see how people are handling certain situations, you know, from everything from COVID to drumming up new business uh, to seeing what other gym owners are going through. I think it's really cool. I actually, I told Anthony the other day, I think it's time that uh, uh, Gym Insight gets us like a little uh, package down in the Caribbean somewhere and we all do like a seminar somewhere. So uh, we all just sit back and have some drinks and food and talk about business and we can get to write it all off. So it'd be good. But no, thanks for being here, everybody. And uh, it's, it's great. So, yeah. So I was talking to Anthony this week and we've been in business now. June will be six years. Uh, we have had the same pricing system since the day we opened. Um, I have a discounted monthly membership for what we call our hero discount membership, which is for military, first responders, teachers, students. Um, it's a $19.99 per month package. Uh, we only require 10 business days notice for cancellation. Uh, we're in a small town, so I don't know where you guys are all located, but in my area, very small town, close-knit group. Um, we try to make it easy for people to get in and get out if they want. Um, it's really worked for us. Um, our standard membership is $24.99 per month. So only five bucks more, not a big difference. Um, each membership, when they're at sign up and once a year, everybody has an annual fee. My annual fees have changed since I've opened. Uh, we've had three increases of annual fees. We went from 15 a year to 20, and now we're at 25. Um, so what I was talking to Anthony about was, is that um, due to the fact that everything's increasing across the board in the United States, you know, we're in California here, as you know, it's pretty much at the cusp of $5 a gallon. Um, for my Chevy Silverado, it's about 100 bucks to fill it up, which is the way it is. Um, but you know, everything is uh, multiplying, paper towels are up, soap is up, antibacterial, don't even get me started with rubber gloves. They're uh, way up. You know, there's so many expenses that we encounter as um, gym owners that most people don't understand do uh, interfere with our uh, bottom line every month. So I have come to the conclusion that um, coming off of, thank God and very grateful for it, the best December I've ever had. Um, we really have not been pushing to promote the business with promotions or anything, but just business has been very good to us. And I'm very grateful. And I think now looking at our gym and my membership base, uh, I'm very close with all my members. We have a great foundation of members. And I think it's time now where we do kind of step up and go into the next phase of increasing our rates. Um, not to any of the members that we already have, they're locked in for good. Um, that's the best part about our business is that uh, unlike other industries, when you increase prices, it does affect the customers you already have. Fortunately for us, uh, when our members walk in on February 1st, when the prices increase, they're not going to be giving us dirty looks because their prices will stay the same as long as they never cancel their accounts. So um, this is coming off of what I've been seeing now in January. So I don't know. Obviously, we're in different areas, different types of gyms, but I have seen probably one of the worst Januaries I've ever had now going on six years. Now, I came off my best December. Actually, I came off my best December, November, and October, if you want to go back three months. Um, memberships were up. Sales of products were up. 
My personal trainers are busy, even though they're independent, but it still helps us to keep retention in the gym. A um, lot of good things, a lot of positive things, apparel, all that type of stuff that we bring in is just, was going very well. January, on the other hand, is kind of actually horrible. <laughs> um, not enough where I would actually sit at my desk and pull whatever hair I've left out of my head out. However, um, it was enough for me to probably, I would say, I started to really look into my numbers, my percentages that I use from the Gym Insight software, obviously, um, and stuff that I keep and file for myself as well. Um, but I started to notice that we weren't increasing our memberships like we should in January. Now, another problem I had is last January, I can't really use as a good model of what January should look like. Out here, there was still a lot of gyms closed. There were still a lot of gyms enforcing masks and we weren't. Um, so there was reasons for people to travel 15, 20 miles back and forth to come to our gym. So I really can't look at that January because that was an amazing month. Um, it definitely is the best January we've ever had. But again, circumstances brought that into our favor. So what I really started to think about was, is I think it's time now that we increase our memberships. I was talking to Anthony about how much per month should we increase. I'm on, I'm probably like most of you gym members, gym owners who don't want to upset people, don't want to overprice yourself out against the big gyms like the Planet Fitnesses, the Anytime Fitnesses, all those $10 a month, bring a friend, bring a guest. Um, that also, like the 24 Hour Fitness that offers saunas and pools and basketball courts, we're strictly a gym. I have a great gym with dumbbells, free weights, bench presses, squat racks. We have a athletic training center for all that athletic needs, you know, turf floors. We have fitness classes, Zumbas, yogas. I even have a daycare. It's not open right now. I haven't opened it since COVID. Uh, I'm going to turn that into a tanning bedroom soon, but we'll get into that in another podcast. However, um, it's time. And after talking to Anthony, uh, we're going to be going up $5 a month on our hero discount monthly membership. And we're going to go up $5 a month on our standards. So I'll be $29.99 per month. I'm going to keep the annuals the same. So when you pay up front, it's $25 annual fee plus the monthly payment. Um, that's going to enable us to have, you know, a little bit more freedom with, you know, all this extra expenditures that are coming in from all over the place. And I feel that it's not really going to uh, hurt uh, new business coming in. We're a great facility. Um, you know, if you guys ever want to check us out online, look me up on Facebook. It's Rosemont Health and Fitness. Look us up on Instagram at Rosemont Health and Fitness. Um, I've been like a clean freak since day one. My staff is amazing, uh, my instructors, my personal trainers. So like we've really built a great reputation all over social media, all over Google, Yelp, whatever it may be. Um, these are all little factors that actually I consider a big help to continuing to grow your business without having to push so many promotions. Um, it's kind of nice to get just word of mouth. This place is great. They're the only gym in town here. The owner is very involved in the community. All these little things help to grow our business. Um, people are understanding that prices need to increase. They're increasing everywhere. If they were to drive to the local town, which is 15 miles away, who knows what that would even cost in gas and mileage. It's insane. So um, it's time to increase. That brings me to the next step of this conversation. Um, Anthony knows I'm a guy of plans. I love to have a plan of attack. So now... Um, as of yesterday, I now have, um, or not yesterday, as of Monday, I now have a social media plan of attack, the way I'm going to handle this whole thing next six weeks. So starting this past Tuesday, I started promoting on my Instagram and my Facebook pages um, that we are increasing our rates for new membership enrollments after February 1st. So what does that do? That brings a bunch of different aspects of content to use for the business, to drum up new revenue and bring in new memberships to get that sense of urgency going and bring in new people before February 1st. In just the four days it's been, I was telling Anthony this, I've already seen memberships start to roll in. The, the cool part is you get messages on Instagram and Facebook because of your marketing that you're doing about it from your actual members right now. So I had a member yesterday, Marilee, she messaged me right away. Can I add my son to the account? 
boom, easy, no problem. Even if her son doesn't start the membership right now, he's locked in at that low rate that that family already has. And it's happened a couple of times in the last few days, which is great. So it's really bringing people involved. It's getting the excitement going. There's a vibe about it and it's enabling us to have a deadline. So my next plan on the attack is when February 1st hits, the membership prices are going up. However, what I'm going to do, and this is something that Anthony and I, I have always talked with and, and discussed in, go, in plans that we have, is that I'm going to utilize my texting section in my Gym Insight. And for February 1st to the 7th, so the first week, I am going to offer, we're having another promotion. It's going to be sign up today for only $10. However, next month you go to $29.99 and your annual fee is waived for a full year and will not hit until next year. Now, I always talk to Anthony about this. It drives me nuts throwing out cheap promotions like this, but it's only every once in a blue moon because people will wait for it, but I don't do it that much. However, I've done it one time before. You'll get an influx of people. You're not going to hold on to all those people. I'll have a set number of how many signups I would like to see in those seven days. And you might keep 20% if you're lucky for the year. For me, if I get one person on 2999 after all those people sign up for just the next five years, that person's going to pay for all that. It's no big deal. However, you're going to get more than that. You know, you're going to get those people that aren't 100% interested in wanting to join the gym right now. They've been contemplating it. They're not gym goers. They might be afraid to come in. However, this is a reason to say, let's just do this already. Yep. So you'll get those new people in. You'll get them involved in classes, meeting trainers, meeting the staff, letting them see that this gym atmosphere is kind of actually kind of nice. It's friendly. It's community. It's, it's, it's my, it's a, uh, it's, it's good for health and fitness and you're building a better you. And that's what it's about getting those people that are very unsure whether they want to join a gym or not, whether they should are going to come in and do that. After that first week's over. Now we're going to get into the next promotion for the following three weeks of February. That's going to be sign up today, $29.99 waiving your $25 annual fee until 2023, and then use that for the next three weeks, bring the people in on that. And then right when February 1st rolls around, we're back to normal. Prices are the same. Our prices are full now, no discounts. And then we start promoting for our weight loss challenge, which is huge every year. It's an annual weight loss challenge we have that starts April 1st, but I start marketing it on March 1st. And it brings in new clients every single year. Big money, big winners. It's great. The members love it. New members love it. And last year I opened it up to non-members. They had to pay an extra $40, but they get in there. The money goes right in the pot. And man, is it competitive for men and women, two divisions. And it goes by body weight percentage lost. So that's kind of how I'm going with raising my prices. Um, and I actually feel mm -hmm. kind of good about it. And I think that, you know, when you really look at the big picture, it's not that big a deal for somebody who hasn't been here yet. And it's going to be a, it's going to make for huge differences when it comes to our and our monthly revenue as well, which is what we're all looking to do is in, increase our revenue. Sure. Well, it, well sorry, you, I, I went on a tangent. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I'm glad you did. That, this is why this is why I said let's just do a podcast. So just this podcast wasn't really planned. Me and Chris usually we talk when we're brainstorming ideas to do stuff, and I was just like let's just let's just do a podcast on what we talked about. So no, that that was awesome. Uh, I want to go over a couple of things because I know people, if they are watching this, is they're probably asking questions like, well, what if an old person had an old rate come in? If that ever happens, you just explain exactly what Chris said. You're like, we haven't raised our rates in such amount of time due to inflation costs, due to the extra soap, gloves, everything that due, due to COVID, we had to raise new memberships by $1.25 a week. You break it down to the ridiculous. I wouldn't even say $5 a month were increased. I would say we had to increase the memberships by $1.25 because it sounds so low. That person looks like a jerk if they complain about $1.25. And the way Chris went about it, I actually like, uh, there's going to be some gym owners out there that says, I want to increase everybody all across the board. Fine. You, you're a gym owner. It's your rules. You do have that uh, right to do that. And in your case, it may work. If you were going to do that, just understand 
you have to be prepared to put an announcement out that you're raising rates due to COVID or what. You're going to have more increased customer service issues explaining that you took an old member of what they signed up for and increasing the rate. And you're probably going to deal with a bunch of cancellation saves because there are going to be those people that pay you monthly that don't use your gym, that that's going to be the tipping point that sets them off to want to cancel. So if you are going to raise everyone's rates across the board, just know that you're, that's probably something you're going to have to deal with. Uh, the reason why I'm in favor of the way Chris is raising his rates is because of the retention saves. Now, even if somebody is a member of Chris's gym and they are paying and they're not going, they know how they have that safety of like, yeah, but if I cancel, I'm going to lose my old rate that's not even out anymore. So he, he's going to increase his membership retention. He's going to keep his old members happy because they get to keep their old rates. He's he created a sense of urgency because now he has a couple of weeks where he's notifying everyone of that rate change. So anyone, if it's a family add on, if it was a person sitting on the fence, uh, just waiting should I join up? Should I not? Maybe I'll tip him into coming into the gym and he's going to uh, get that increased um, flow of, of foot traffic going to his facility. So that's why I'm sort of a, a fan of the way Chris is, is, is doing his membership raise, because let's all be honest. If you're watching this, you're a gym owner. We've all been thinking about it where inflation, everything going up, everything costs more. And if you're somebody that hasn't raised your rates and maybe something you want to think about uh, doing it, that way or doing it the way Chris is doing it. Um, now, that being said, I did want to start talking about how January, Chris, you, I know you said that this January really hasn't been that good. Maybe you're watching this and you have a January that is really good. I want to talk about slowing down the sales process because there are some of us have I'm sure some of you guys have front desk people that aren't the great at membership sales. And in January, there's, there is some foot traffic or people, even if your foot traffic isn't as much, you have people much more eager to sign up than any other month. And slowing down the sales process, still do those membership tours just because somebody says they want to come in and buy a membership. Don't just start on signing them up right then and there. Still do the tour. Still talk about personal training. Because if you just sign them up, you have somebody that sets coming at you with their credit card, you may have lopped off a personal training package. You may have lopped off an extra member to sign up, a family member. Um, so slowing down the sales process, I would say is crucial um, this January and February. Um, I don't know about you, Chris. I've, I've always experienced a January, like everybody says, oh, New Year's resolutions is all this money. It's, I've never noticed that. I've always noticed back half of the month of January it gets busier, and my February, April, March were my New Year's resolution months. Um, what have you noticed in January, and what steps are, are you take? I know you you have your plan of attack for your social media to get people in for your new things, but um, why don't you talk about what when, as soon as somebody walks through the door, your process of signing someone up, and maybe you know your thoughts on slowing down the sales process. So um, you made one point that I disagree about actually. And it's funny because I actually train my staff um, to do it this way, but you'll have everybody walks in the gym a certain way when you're coming in to sign up for the gym or just check out the gym, whatever it may be. Um, sure. If they come in and they are at the desk and they say, well, I'm here to get a membership. The first thing we do, if they say that, I don't care what happens, you hand them the tablet and you close the sale right then. But then okay. it is mandatory that no matter what, they get the tour. So then they okay. get the tour afterwards. Only because you never, like somebody's ready to rock and roll, credit cards in hand, let's go, let's get them going. Um and then you give the tour and you give them your key card and all that stuff and show them how to use that. Um, so that is the only thing I, I, I do push. If they come in ready to rock and roll, you get them done. Um, if they're well, as long as you're still giving them the tour, it's not slowing down. The, oh, it's not yeah, no. pushing them out. Yeah. It's the same thing. If you come in for a day pass, we give a tour. Like it's the tour is a good thing. It shows them where the bathrooms are. It shows them where most of the equipment goes. Um, obviously, you know about our athletic center, which is on another end of the building. Um, it's a separate studio so we show them that uh, you go over the hours the class schedules how you can look that up on our website check us out on facebook instagram uh you know uh, holiday hours stuff like that so there's always a tour um the one thing that is keeping me 
uh, keeping my focus on point for this whole new promo and raising prices and stuff right now for January not being that great. It's kind of nice a little bit because as a gym owner, you hear about the New Year's resolutioners and, and most people that don't know gym, the gym business and all you other gym owners can probably uh, say the same thing. We become rich and we can retire next month because we bring in so much <laughs> new business. Um, but that's not the case. However, this time it's kind of nice because, you know, how many percentages of New Year's resolutioners do you really hold on to? So it's kind of nice because the people that are signing up are kind of a little bit more serious and taking this more of, I want to make this my lifestyle, not just a three month quick hit, lose 10 pounds, become a new me in three months resolution, and then boom, they cancel their membership and don't come back. Um, I've noticed that also, I don't even like to bring up COVID much anymore. Um, it's an excuse now at this point, I'm over it. However, um, COVID has changed my perspective on it. another thing in the gym business. When I first opened, before we opened, I did a lot of research talking to other gym owners and people in the fitness industry. And they used to say that um, the a real gym rat, six days a week, you lose money on because they use your facility so much. Well, I don't know about you guys, but the gym rats and the, the, the gym goers, the five day a weekers, they're keeping our lights on now. I have had more serious people now in my gym than I've had in the four to five years before this, because we would always just have the hobbyist, maybe three times a week. If we we're lucky, we'd see people. But now we got a real consistent flow of steady uh, gym goers. I don't like to use the word gym rat, but people like myself, who I like to work out six days a week. It's just keeps my mind right, keeps me focused on things in life. Um, we have a big base now, and that's kind of another reason why I've decided to, you know what, I got a great foundation of people. We're going for it, um, and we're going to raise the rates. Mm -hmm. um, so the other thing that I've liked is about raising the rates, especially with the way January has been, is that you're going to get serious people when it comes to making an investment on their health and fitness when they join. Like if you spend, you know, I don't know, it used to be like a $44 package, right? Okay. You didn't really invest that much money. You don't really have to think too much if you want to cancel it in a month or two. But if you start spending 50, 55, 60 bucks a month to get started with your annual and everything, you might think twice about canceling two, three months from now, like, well, I paid that annual fee plus the monthly's high. I might as well stick it out another month and try to maybe do better and, and, and get myself a little bit more consistent. Um, so there is that aspect of it all too. Um, February um, is always a pretty good month for us as well. Um, I can say that you do get those people that didn't want to join in January because they didn't want to be considered a resolutioner because people do have a complex a little bit, even though we don't that way but people think that way that we do think that way if that makes any sense um sure. march is always good for us because i always have my weight loss challenge uh promoting uh to starts april 1st you know people got to get in the door get signed up start to learn the gym before that happens so february and march are always good months to begin with so it's a good time to start the new pricing i would say too um but as for january like i said this january has been kind of sluggish i think it all has to do with again they started that new variant and they freaked out those people who you would not normally see join a gym, but would pro were thinking about joining a gym because it's a new year and they do want to maybe better themselves. But you know how it is. The mm -hmm. people that aren't 100% into the gym yet find any excuse to not go. So yep. they brought this new variant out and, you know, I mean, I don't want anybody getting sick either. However, it's time to, you know, step out and, in my opinion, get back into the motions of getting yourself in shape. Those people are going to use that as an excuse to not go. Um, yep. So that's one thing about this whole January thing going on now, too. So all again, though, I think it's going to be good. I've already had positive vibes from it. It's an excitement. It sparks me up as a gym owner. You know how it is, guys. We get sluggish. We get complacent. And we get bored sometimes. And, and you know burnt what? Out. There's times I'm burnt out or bored. I do other stuff too. I have other businesses that I run. But this is my fun business. I love it. It's rewarding. And I'll call Anthony in the morning and ask him one silly question about something. Like, 
hey, this key tag number isn't acting right. And next thing you know, we're 45 minutes into a conversation. We're both revved up and I'm ready to go back to business and start new promoting, which is what happened on Monday. And that's why we said, yep. let's do this week. We're, we're focused. We got a new goal. We got a new plan in place. And let's attack. Um, so yeah. that's, yeah, it's just, uh, we're all there. And, you know, the minute you kind of get a little bit sluggish, a little bit, you know, laid back, business could slouch. Um, like I said, I've had a really good December, so I'm not worried, but I don't ever want to just lay back and let everything just kind of like get boring and complacent. So it's, it's, it's good to do these podcasts too, because it revs us all up. Yeah. Well, burnout's a real thing. I mean, I, most people that I've ever talked to that ask me questions in their mind, they know that the, the answer to that question. Um, it's just that sometimes you're burnt out. Maybe this month there hasn't been good walking traffic and those cancellations during a bad month are just like a dagger to the heart, man. It almost makes you feel, and then you miss a sale. It almost feels like you can't close a window. You know, it, you can get burnt out very easily. And, um, you know, it's, it, a lot of these owners know the answers, what they need to do. It's just me reaffirming that. And you see, like, I hear like a spark in their eye and then they get out and they get like, like you just said, it, it puts a new lease on life for that day and it lights a fire under their butt and they, and they go. Uh, so that, that's the whole point of these, these podcasts. Maybe you are burnt out and you can listen to this and say, oh, that's a good idea. I'm going to start going with that. But I will say... You can't change everything. If you try to change everything at the gym, you push the needle at 1%. If you're, if you're trying to change something, you got to focus on one thing and just run at it with your team 100% to really affect change. Um, so uh, you mentioned before your weight loss challenge, just in case, if you can briefly go over that, because somebody might go, oh, he mentioned a weight loss challenge. It goes good. Can you describe what, that, what you do and how, how that's, that worked for you? Yeah, so um, my wife, um, she is the one that actually pushed me to do it. Um, the first year we were open, uh, I'm sorry, not the first year. One, two, did we do it the first year? Yeah, so the first year we were open, she said, I think these challenges are pretty big. People love to do them. You should do it. Um, she's not a real gym person. She's more of an athlete. She prefers to grab a basketball and go play at the park or something to work out. But I was like, you know what? it sounds like a good plan. So, um, I talked to her about it, how we could do it. And I put together a plan that it's going to be, a, it's a nine week program and how it works is every year from April 1st to June 1st, we do, um, a weight loss challenge. So at first it was just members for the first few years. I never imagined how many people were going to sign up for this thing. How it works is they pay you 25 bucks. They enter the, they enter the contest. Um, the first few years, I didn't make any money at all on it. I just put all the money in pot for men and the pot for women. Well, we average about 70 men and we average, I'm sorry, 70 women. And we average roughly around 25 men per challenge. And we only do it once a year. It's really cool. People look forward to it. Lots of results. So what you guys have to understand is us as the business owners, we look at it as uh, the client looks at it as a challenge, right? They're getting in there to win and they're in it to win it. And they, they come to the gym a lot. They push themselves, incredible results, right? Boom, they get the check. You write them a big check. I have the big check board that I use for all my scholarships and mm -hmm. challenge winners and stuff. It's great promoting. But us as business owners, it is a content machine for nine straight weeks of your business, actually 12 weeks almost, because I oh, promote yeah. in March, during the contest in April, during the contest in May, during the end in June, before and after pictures, pictures with the winners with the big checks, $900, $600. And it's just a great way to spark up a challenge. People that aren't even in the challenge are excited for the people that are in the challenge. The trainers are involved, personal trainers that rent space for me, uh, give out special deals for people that are involved in the challenge. I had um, a personal trainer actually put a reward poster up looking for the winner of the, the winner of the challenge that wants to win. Um, she got, she was going to, they, they, she made a deal where she was going to pay the client if they won on top of the check. 
So like these are all things. It's just great for business all around the whole gym uh, excitement. And it's, it's a really good way to, you know, put everybody's emotions high in the gym and get new people in as well. You get new memberships because some people need that carrot to chase in order to get in the gym and get it going. Um, also, what I did last year, last year was the first year where I actually, I don't want to say made money, but took a few of the proceeds, you know, a certain percentage went to the pot, certain percentage went to the gym because it's a lot of work. You know, mm -hmm. it's a lot of promoting. Um, it's a lot of things, keeping excitement, reweighing people. I allow members to reweigh whenever they want with the scale just because that's just people's mindsets. And that's fine, but it's a lot of work. You know, the, 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 the desk staff has to go in the special room, take care of the weigh-ins. I mean, it's a lot of work. However, I opened it up for non-members also, and I promoted it all over this valley. And we got like about 12 non-members who don't even live around here, but they got to come in the day of weigh-ins. So we do weigh-ins, like you give like a four day window and they pick when they want to come. Obviously, mm -hmm. whoever curious is going to weigh in on that first day, 5 a.m., right when they wake up. Um, <laughs> but it was pretty cool After to bring a buffet. In. Yeah, and it was double the price for non-members. But they didn't, but I mean, what are you talking? You're talking 40, I think it was $45 for a non-member to right. join a challenge um, to win in the women's, like, you know, I think it was over $850 last year. Um, but it's just a really good way to generate business in the slower months. And then think about it. Challenge ends June 1st. Guess what? They're summer ready. So now for the whole month of June, July, August, you have all these before and after pictures of, of reality in your gym. The average Joe, the school teacher, the fireman. I had a second place fireman, Kern County fireman. He lost like 40 pounds. I mean, these guys look great. These women look awesome. I had a, this lady hired a trainer outside my gym. You know what? I allow that. As long as you're a member, you can come work out in my gym. He joined the gym for the three months. We got another membership because of that. She won. She lost, I think, close to like, I forget the percentage, but it was incredible. Christina, incredible. And she worked hard up until that very last hour of the gym open on June 1st did her way in and she won by like 0.3% body fat Damn. or body weight loss. So, I mean, it's amazing. It's great. It's just great stuff. It's good stuff. I, and I get banners made, um, big six foot uh, retractable banners when you walk in the gym, up on the walls in the gym, like you really make it something special. Nice. Nice. And also a lot of content, like you said, you know, you get a lot, how many people like to show off a, they're working out at the gym or they're after pictures on their Instagram feed on Facebook, hashtag Rosamond health and fitness. Right. So, I mean, all that stuff just increases your Google ranking and uh, supplies you with a ton of content. Before and after pictures. I've been saying this since day one is the greatest business card you can own as a gym owner, because all it does is it's the proofs in the pudding. You take an average Joe and what they do is they become like a superstar and they make John Doe over here think, well, if he did it, maybe I could do it. And it sparks his mind. Next thing you know, he's like, maybe I should join the gym and maybe I should hire a trainer. And that's how this whole thing works. And it's kind of upsetting because in the social media world, um, you have a lot of influencers they just show you the perfect body pictures and the perfect angles and all this stuff. That stuff doesn't help us as gym owners. That what helps us is the truth. You know what I'm saying? Even when I'm working out, like if you guys ever follow me on, on Instagram, I'm a big supporter of Instagram for our business. Again, I'm an average guy doing my workouts. I work out so that my mind's right. My body feels good. I'm healthy and I'm sharp for my business in good shape for my family you know, um, that's what I promote. And that's what we should promote as gym owners, because you'll get those people who are out there thinking about whether they want to come join this gym or not. Um, and if it's okay that you don't have a six pack. Most people don't. Models have six, <laughs> not models. You know what I'm saying? Um, I like my coffee with milk. I like my ice cream here and there, you know, but we're, we, we promote the lifestyle. So it's a, the challenge is a great way to, to do that. Um, 
And uh, if you're not doing challenges right now in your gym and you're thinking about it, it's a great idea. Go on my Facebook page and scroll through my pictures. If you scroll down to the challenge areas, you'll see all the banners I make, the pictures I take and all that stuff too. So it's good. Do you do, you do anything else? Because I know what you used to work in the past, uh, like for example, back in the day, with the old Nautilus fitness or 24 hour fitnesses or golds, they every like places used to see the fish bowls where it'd say, drop your business card in here to win a free lunch or stuff like that. I know that was something that I still continue to do. And, and I know that always worked where I'm, I always, I always tell everybody, whether you're a new gym owner, existing gym owner, every business within a three mile radius should know who you are, know your, that you own that gym and become friends with them. And, um, I, I used to give free gym memberships to those business owners. They never would come and work out. Um, but they would, if like, say there was a guy that owned the Jersey Mike subs, they would talk to their customers. If they see that to somebody walked in that works out, he's like, Oh, I, I'm a member at lifestyle fitness and two things it benefited me with, with that. And also they would let me put these little, uh, fish bowls in where it'd say, Hey, drop your business card in there to win a free lunch. And at the end of the month, I would go in and, and take all those business cards and I'd pick one out and I'd buy them a free lunch there. But I had a whole fishbowl of business cards and like on, we all have down days. Like there's, you can't deny in the gym business, you have periods where there's nothing to do for an hour, two hours. And, uh, you know, I would call up those people and say, Hey, how's it going? This is Anthony from Lifestyle Fitness. Uh, you won second place where you want a free month over here at Lifestyle Fitness. I just need to know what time you want to come pick that up. Or if you want to give this to a friend or family member and, oh yeah, I'll come down at six o'clock. Okay, great. Well, that's another lead to come in. I never, you never should wait for people to walk in. I always think this should be some type of promotion, like with your weight loss challenge or going out and pounding the pavement, uh, doing a fishbowl. Another, another good one that worked really well was I gave a free membership to a manager at a gas station. And I basically said, Hey, if you let me promote here, I'll, um, I'll give you a free monthly membership for as long as you let me promote here. And for an hour out of the day, uh, I would stand, stand there, or I would send, uh, an, a, a work, an employee over there with a bunch of gift cards. And as people were filling up, I'd say, Hey, make sure if you spend over $20 in gas today, Come and see me. I'll give you a free month gift certificate to uh, the gym across the street. And I had people chasing me down. I spent 40. Can I get two? Where normally, you know, if you just put gift certificates or uh, passes on cars, they end up on the floor. You put it on someone's door. They end up on the ground in the trash. So what I kind of came up with was putting a value on that pass where they actually used them. And it's all about just generating foot traffic. There's tons of different ways to do it. But if you're somebody that's burnt out and, you know, there's the walk-in traffic isn't there, there, there's, you have to pound the pavement. And if, if, like I said, if a gym, if business owners within your area don't know your name, don't know you exist, you need to get out there because if they don't know you exist, probably the people living down the street don't know you exist either. Um, yep. Is there anything besides the weight loss challenge that you do to help people come through the door that, um, uh, so you're not just waiting for walk-ins? Yeah. Um, oh, there's a lot. But um, like you said, and pounding the pavement, that's exhausting. So if you're yeah. burnt out, that's the last thing you want to be doing is walking around. You know, you know I don't want to say like just kissing people's sure. ass. Hey, here, come in. Come in. That's a lot of work. Um, what I do is I, I, I break my year up in blocks. So okay. um, as you know, um, from I, I, we've talked about how I do my – annual membership raffle every year so oh. that goes september 1st to october 31st and all that is is just a way for me to thank my members every time one member walks in the door in those two months they fill out a raffle ticket first name last name and drop it in the water bucket and at the end mm. of the two months you try to get as many workouts in as you can and I pick like 10, 12, 15 different winners for different stuff. The winner this year got six free months. Second place got three free months. And then I gave out some apparel and supplements and gift cards. I go to local businesses in town here, restaurants, gas stations. I get gift cards, you know, $10 to Chevron Gas, $40 to Ramon's Mexican Restaurant, stuff like that. Um, so I do things like that. Another thing I do with that raffle is if you bring in a friend during these uh, – eight weeks and they sign up and say, Hey, 
Bill Smith recommended me, that member gets five free tickets automatically put into the barrel. So it increases their chances on winning stuff. Um, we do that kind of thing. That's pretty good because, again, it provides content. You don't want to bore people with your content. So it just it gets the excitement up again another time of year. Um, as you know, too, I mean, we talk a lot, Anthony. Um, I do the, <laughs> the last two years. We have done something in December that is genius. Um, in our small town, there was never anybody who did the Santa Claus. So I got with uh, the local sheriff's department and me and a bunch of my friends and my wife, my daughter, we organized Santa Claus around Rosamond. And this is the second year we've done it. The first year we did it was because nobody was able to go out to see Santa. So we made a route and this year we did it again. And it has been the greatest thing we have ever done. We get nothing but comments on how awesome it is. I mean, I'm talking thousands of people coming out, sitting in the streets for us to bring Santa Claus around on a trailer with the cop car in front of us. I mean, it's a small little simple gesture, but however, I don't do it for the business. I don't promote the business during it. Um, I do it uh, as me, as Chris Jamara, but at the same time, it just happens to be, he's the guy that owns the gym. So is it good for business? Of course it is, guys. But that's another thing I do. We do the, the weight loss challenge. Um, and, you know, that's that's kind of like what all I do now for that type of stuff. Um, like I said, we've really built a great reputation. COVID, when we reopened, was a great thing for us because all these people 15, 20, 30 miles away coming to our gym because we're the only gym open um, because I chose to open when we were, you know, like when it was a weird time. Um, so we have a really good reputation. I could be literally in another county. People see our shirts. My apparel sells like crazy. So we just have a great rep. And that generates the business for you as well. That's like having an extra employee. Just like, you know, when, you know, you so a member declines and Jim Insight texts them right away. Again, it's a great cheap way to have an extra employee on staff. Um, and uh, another thing I've done in the last four months, and it's been great for me um, because I have other businesses and I travel a lot for my other work. Um, one of my employees, I trained her I come from when I was a kid in high school, I was a telemarketer. That's where I learned sales. And I used to call people up at home and I worked for a mortgage company. I trained one of my, my recent staff members how to call people with you know missed payments, whether it might be cards wrong, uh, not enough funds in the account, whatever it may be. I, I, I email her once a week, the yellow and red members, and she calls them. For every member that she gets a payment, she gets a bonus um, every single time she gets a member to pay. So she'll email me back that next day, her log, and I'll look up the accounts and ma make sure they're matched up. And anybody who she even puts on the log that's coming in in the next few days, I keep put on a separate list. And if they come in and pay, she gets the bonus. Well, she just made a joke today because I had to pay her for a few accounts she got yesterday. She texted me, thanks, you're paying for my Philly trip. Because she's taking a trip to Philadelphia next month, but I just I said, look, you're doing you're doing the calls, you're doing it. But she's excited because she's made close to probably like two fifty, three hundred dollars extra a month just with this little task that probably takes her about an hour and a half, two hours every shift. But it's mm -hmm. worth it for me. Tasks get removed, so every day when I come back, I don't have forty tasks staring at me, and it's just another bonus for the gym to keep revenue coming in, keeping members on point with their payments. Um, so that's another thing that I just added to the business just recently. And I've been doing this for almost six years. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's that there. So what, are, what, else, what other topics are we at? What, what are your thoughts on um, – so I just, just to circle back on the rates, um, what are your thoughts about – I, you've already spoken that texting has worked for you. We in gym inside we do allow that if you have it. Uh, what are your thoughts about like doing a mass text to your canceled people? Like, hey, we're raising our rates um, on February first. Anybody that was thinking about reactivating their membership, uh, if you're done by January or thirty first, you will lock in that rate or something like. Have you thought about doing that, or is that something you already set up? Yeah, well, um, I did think about doing the text on the 1st of February for the $10. Sign up today for $10. Hmm. You know, don't forget, 
we're only allowed to fit a certain amount of text in that little box. So Who else it shows I, up as I would, two. I, yeah. love to put, I would love to put like eight sentences, you know, Hey, this week we're doing this, this is uh, next thing. I'll give us a call. No, you have to like really figure a way to word it so that it's, you get their wow factor because that's the first thing. The first sentence has to be the wow factor. And obviously the first thing that, that gets their attention is their first name that we're allowed to get put in there. Um, so I have a lot of text things in mind. Um, I was, my plan was to see where my texting uh, maximum capacity is like right around like the 26, 27. So that'll be like Wednesday, Thursday next week. And yeah, if I'm looking good, which I should be, cause I actually upgraded and I have tons of text left. Um, I'll probably do something before the first and then another one on the first, just be prepared though, guys, if you have a database of, you know, three to 5,000, uh, if you have a database by three to 5,000, uh, members, you're going to get a lot of text back, you know, the stop, you might get some curse words, whatever it may be. You just, what I do is I just go into their account and I just delete them. You know, it's yeah. a good way to system fresh and keep people out of your system it's just how it is i do the same thing all the time i i wouldn't really want a lot of text messages either but we got to do what we got to do we got to take a shot um so yeah that is on my mind and i'm definitely going to be utilizing the text messaging systems in the next couple weeks for sure awesome and i, I just want to see if i can let me see if this lets me share my screen because i want to you made a good post about notifying it on facebook to let people know that you guys are raising your rates um I don't know if this, okay. It does let me share a screen multiple. Yeah. And like, like I said too, I mean, anybody that wants to look us up, just go on Facebook and put in Rosamond, R-O-S-A-M-O-N-D health and fitness. And you'll see the Facebook you'll, and go to the Instagram too. You might see things there as well. Um, I, oh, the, you'll also see my promo video. I don't know if you could show that. Um, this is a video I made in 2019 so what I do is whenever I make a marketing video with the marketing company that I use, I make sure I can utilize it in multiple avenues. So I can use it really any time of year. Like in this video, I state, you know, come in, mention this video and, you know, get, receive your promotion. I can use it anytime. Um, I awesome. try to very rarely have a video where it's just one thing. Like I did make a weight loss challenge one that I use every year now. But um, everything else is kind of able to use for any time of year when it comes to it. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's because you're basically just saying it's a special promotion, which can be anything. And you can use that video as many times as you want. Um, this is your this was your notification to everybody that you are raising the rates. I think it's awesome. It, it tells you right here. And uh, just so in case anybody is not with Jim Insight, this is his tablet. This is called the Guru app where... As he mentioned before, if somebody wants to sign up, they just hand the tablet. This is to what he's referring to, where it has all of his memberships on the screen. And it for me, it took out the negotiation and the sale. Like if you're doing paper contracts or, or, or whatever, if you're hand tentering the person on a digital, if you're doing it that way, it took out. I, and you could you could be totally honest with this. But for me, when I was asking for information for me to enter in, I would hear, what do you need that for? Or... Uh, when it came down to the price, it was like, I have to think about it. I've noticed with it, with the app, it's just like, if there's an empty box, they fill it out. They just pick, they see all the membership options. They just pick which one they want. It's, it took away all the negotiations for me. Uh, what have you noticed with, uh, since switching over to a tablet, it made people sign up. I love the tablet. And you know, what's funny is what you just said makes total sense. What I do is usually, um, if I have somebody who, you know, you give a tour and, you can tell they're interested, but you know if they're going to sign up right then. And with the way we do our tour, we actually go to our athletic center last, which is our separate studio. And afterwards, when we walk out, you're discussing the terms of the membership, the pricing and everything. You'll have people, guys, you'll understand too. They won't say like, yeah, sounds good. Let's do it. I mean, or yeah, let's sign up. Nothing. They'll just sit. They'll just stare at you. And you're like, you never want to ask. Um <laughs> ever want to ask, uh, do you want to sign up? That's like the worst right. thing you can do. Yeah. So what I do is I said, come next door. Let me show you something. Well, I'll bring them in. The first thing I'll do is I'll grab the tablet. I flip it around so they can read it. I tap what membership they're getting. And what I like to do is when you do that, Anthony, you know this, it tells you your breakdown of your membership uh, cost that day, your annual yes. fee, 
your processing fee, which is usually zero, uh, your monthly payment. So what I do is I point. I'm like, so like we discussed next door, here's your annual fee due today. Here's your first month's payment due today. Total comes to this right here. But this is what you'll be paying every month on the month that you sign up. If you need to cancel, just give us 10 business days notice. And that's it. Very simple. And that usually solidifies the sale. It's they just start typing their name in. You take their picture. It's just a great way to pretty much just break the ice on whether they want to sign up or not. And they get a little bit of security when they see it right there and they go, okay, let's do it. So the tablet has been a lifesaver. I have saved so much money in paper and printing ink and staples and pens and it's faster. And the best part about it is here in California, minimum wage is anywhere from 1450 to 15 bucks an hour right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, 1350 to 1450 an hour right now. Um, it saves time in training employees how to do a sign up. It's so simple. I mean, it does it for you. Gotcha. Yeah, that's that's what it was kind of created for. And um, I actually I had another owner where uh, him and his wife both got COVID. They were not able to go to the gym, and um, we're actually gonna. This is gonna be a write up on our blog. Um, and he he literally said like this. Guru saved me for two weeks because I wasn't able to go to the gym. A bunch of members stepped up and donated like an hour or two hours that they would stand behind the desk for people that walked in. And he basically just told them, he's like, somebody walks in, just hand the tablet. And that's what he did. And it saved his sales for about two weeks. Um, so yeah, I, I agree with you. I think, because let's be honest today, people that, that, especially the younger generation, it's not like how we were when we were like, some of us were just good at sales to begin with, or were very teachable. I would say this generation, I don't want to say they don't care about working, but they're not as teachable with sales. And let's, you just said it's, it's a starting off job. They're not going to give it their all to, to close deals. Right. So at least this can kind of take all that work and be their salesman for them where they're just hand the tablet, the kind of thing does it, there's no third degree on why do you need that? It just goes right into the sale, digital signature, credit card transaction as you're done. That's why I, I, I really love this. Not that I work with Jim Insight, but as somebody that's been an operator for 15 years, this is like, if you're a good sales guy, using Guru is like taking candy from a baby. And if you're not a good salesperson, it makes you a good salesperson. Um, mm -hmm. that's, that's what I've noticed anyway with everyone else using it. And it's and kind of and it's it's a professional look. Like somebody True. walks into my gym. I, I have a you know, when it comes to a gym, I have a fairly small facility. I'm about five thousand square feet. You know, I don't have the saunas and the pools and all that type of stuff. Um, when people see that, they go, Oh, you know, because it just looks it looks badass. Um yeah. and it yeah, definitely absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm the last thing that we can end off as. Because everybody, uh, we, you mentioned before, you know, people are starting to come back in, even the people that were scared because they were saying variants, this, variants, that. People are starting to come back in because, let's face it, summer, spring is right around the corner. And um, I say I, a lot of people have put on the, the COVID weight, the variant weight, um, and they need to come in. One thing to help it is is keep the place clean. Like you, I know you always keep the place clean. And anytime I've ever talked to a brand new owner or an owner looking to, um, you know, increase business, I always say, if there's anything that I've talked to you about, any advice that I gave you, there's always two pieces of information, two pieces of advice that if that's all you listen to, fine. And that's keep the place meticulously clean where you can eat off the floor and treat everyone like they're your family member. If that's all you could take from our advice, then you're, you're 10 times better than a lot of other gyms that are out there. Um, one thing that I used to use to, to help uh, keep the uh, gym clean was we used to have a checklist where you, it wasn't just like, I know a lot of places it's like, okay, check the bathroom, check this. This was more of a detailed checklist. I actually have it right here. This was uh, my old checklist where we had it on the thing where it broke down into check the handles on top of the sink, make sure they're done. And it was a simple of, you know, 
nine o'clock, 12 o'clock, three o'clock. And the employees had to make sure that their name was checked off on this. And um, this was which helped keep our gym very, very, very clean to where people said something when they walked in. I'm, I know your gym is the same way where people say something to you. Is there anything that you do differently um, to, to make sure that that place is immaculate? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things like um, I remember actually I'm trying to think when it was. When did we join with you guys? I remember when I um, became uh, aware of who you were by finding your gym podcast uh, online. And that's how I found you. So um, I remember you saying like, you know, keep the vinyl in good shape. Uh, keep good the paint on the walls and I'm like man this guy's mm -hmm. like like it's me and that's how I am I got a great upholstery guy who I go to um, if one seat needs it I'll call him out make sure he's got the material and within 24 hours that machine is fixed up and looking brand new again and the people notice that stuff um, the one thing I want to tell you guys though the big thing is that and it's easy for us gym owners to get caught in this is that Listening to our members all the time. They all want new equipment. They all want new machines. They all want new cardio or this or that. We can't always keep buying and buying and buying. They don't understand that. That's why they don't, that's why they don't own a gym. However, um, you do do things like I installed new mirrors in one of my fitness rooms the other day. We haven't had mirrors in there. Um, keeping that paint on the wall to keep it fresh. That's another good aspect of it. But Absolutely. you can do things that don't cost a lot of money but keep the place in great shape and keep members noticing that you're always taking care of the facility. That's an important thing. Um, just like, uh, you know, same thing with uh, employees with their uniforms, all that type of little stuff makes the gym look professional. Keep all your supplement racks organized. We have a, a refrigerator now. And guys, let me tell you something. I don't charge a lot for like monster drinks and uh, rock stars and all this stuff. However, I, I, uh, I just uh, started implementing uh, the protein, uh, pure protein drinks, the shaker bottle, you know, with the ready to go type drinks. And it's been a major success. Um, I'm selling water bottles, water for $2 a pop. Um, it's just a great little asset to the business. Excuse me one sec. I'm going to plug this in here. I'm dying a little bit. Uh, <laughs> come on oh i thought you did all right cool no i'm here so um keeping the refrigerator nice and organized i know it's funny but i have always said it labels out and making sure it's full uh clean looking the fridge supplements make sure you dust them off little stuff like that all add up um i've actually just purchased um like a shop vac just for the dust that you can't reach, you know, cause sometimes the regular vacuums, they're good, but they can't, they don't have the power to get the real, real, real grit dust. So, um, I recently just bought a cheap, you know, hundred dollar shop back just for that situation. Um, all these little things, I use this stuff called, uh, uh, equipment polish from gym national gym supply in California here. If you don't use their stuff now, look it up. It's called equipment polish. It's awesome for like the cardio equipment and anything with like shiny type look to it. And it really spoofs it up when you have the gym ready to go and they leave at night. Like my staff knows you're setting up for the next day. When you open up and hit the lights, it's just, it pops. And that's what you want. Yep. As soon as you walk in. And that, and that's, I think that that'll be good for another podcast where we talk about branding because uh, a lot of people that I talk to where they're like, oh, you know, just people aren't walking in or whatever. Well, if we take a deep dive into their gym, it's, it goes back to the, the three things. Are you friendly to your members? Are you clean? And do you have a brand? You may have a logo online, but, you know, like look at Chris. He, you could see Rosemont Health and Fitness all over the place. The last podcast, you have, you have shirts. You're making your employees not just come in with T-shirts or have the have your brand there be proud of your brand make your employees be proud of your brand and we, uh because if you're have, if your employees aren't proud of your brand they're not wow dude i never seen yeah. branded pants yeah we oh yeah jog, that's all yeah jog. that's all i need to see i come from a, a race car background and mm -hmm. i treat my team here just like i treat my racing team same thing so 
it's the, like the logo is everything to me. So it means a lot. Like I always, I actually have talked about it to on posts before about like a business owner, a business's logo means more than just what you see. Um, there's stories with it. You know, there's a lot of uh, blood, sweat, and tears that go with that logo. So when your logo and your branding means so much out in the community that you're from, like when I'm in the supermarket or if I'm at the mall, it's just like people see it. They got good things to say about it. It makes you feel really proud about what you've built. So all my employees have joggers, sweatshirts, t-shirts, hats. I mean, they don't, they, they, and the thing that's cool is, is that my members, we sell apparel to order. So if somebody says, you know, I'll have a, a couple options of what they want, but when I am going back and forth to the apparel guy two, three times a week to pick up stuff. That's so awesome that people want to pay money to wear our logo, which is great. Yeah. And actually I'm starting a new, I'm doing a new one for t-shirts for spring. Um, it's going to say, it's just going to be a basic t-shirt. I use really good quality stuff and I'm just doing hashtag my gym mm -hmm. and member. And on the back, it's just going to have our logo and that's it basic. And then people that love, that's, the, that's your gym. You know what I mean? I always say like my gym is everybody's gym here and that's how everybody feels. And when you build that community, I mean, that that's pretty badass. It's fun. Yeah, that's abs absolutely. I think I think that should be. You know, I know. Let's see how long we've been on here now. It's been, been over, on a while. <laughs> yeah, been over. <laughs> hour. So just to recap everything, in case you forwarded the video, or whatever. This podcast has been about increasing, knowing to increase your rates, keeping. I guess keeping your gym clean. Put a fresh paint on paint on the walls. Um, yeah. You know, maximizing your sales and. Uh, yeah, we'll have to we'll have to do another podcast. These are my favorite ones, the one that goes off the rails. And because this is really not just an interview, right? It's just two people talking back and forth of what's going on in the industry. So um I won't keep unless you have anything that you want to bring up that we should talk about, but I think uh this should be I don't want it to be a two hour long podcast and nobody watch we're, the video, you know. We're on our way to that two hour podcast. <laughs> but no, I I think we touched base on a lot of things. Um I hope that some gym owners made it through the whole thing um and maybe if they could leave some comments for us in this video yes. on the bottom in youtube so that maybe we know we can touch base on more in the in the future so that when we do go off the rails it's more beneficial to certain people um <laughs> you know send me messages on instagram if you have questions about anything and i like i said i want to thank everybody else for jumping on too even the fitness guy that was selling the fitness equipment i love that video because um, I forget his name, the big dude. Steven, but, he he owns yeah. a gym as well. He's a gym owner oh, as well. Okay. Yeah, because I remember shopping for my gym equipment at the used gym equipment factories all in LA here. And it was a blast. I went through a lot of learning there for sure. But it was there every video you learn something. And it's it's nice to see everybody going through the same thing. Yep. Absolutely. That's why we do this. This is just a, a fun thing. So and like I said, when you call before I even started doing these things, uh, we talk about what we're talking about now anyway. So what we're talking about, other people are probably thinking, and if we could help them, all the best. I will be putting Chris's uh, gym and uh, information in the bio of this video. So if you do want to reach out via Instagram or uh uh, do you want people giving you a call if, they, if somebody was if a gym owner you do you want a gym owner seeing this video and giving you a call up? Oh, a call? I mean, a phone no, call? Just reach out via Instagram. Don't call Instagram. <laughs> I'm I'm always trying to build my Instagram with real followers, though, not just phony followers that a lot of companies have. So yeah, just right. like us on Instagram, and you'll you'll follow me. You'll see what I do on my Instagram stories every morning. The big thing is uh, with all the high schoolers as a joke right now. Um, they, they made, a uh, uh, some kind of video of me every, like not every morning, but like two or three times a week, I'll come on and it's good morning. And all the kids love that, you know? <laughs> and, you know, when I go to the high school to talk to all and they all laugh, like, look at this reel that we made of you and this and that. So it, it's just kind of cool. So if you, you, you could probably learn from some things and Hey, you know, who knows, maybe, uh, you could tell me something on Instagram as well. So subscribe, leave a comment. Reach out to Chris on Instagram. <laughs> All right, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Chris, thank you so much for coming on the podcast uh, so late. I know we didn't plan on it, but uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Nope. Always fun. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.